welcome back. Chipmunk of Power here, writing love. Um, I'm First of all, I want to apologize. This may be a little shaky today because I am between cameras, so I'm shooting this on my phone. <laughs> um, anyway, I want to finish up my page to stage series by talking a little bit about what happens when your play gets published and performed. Very exciting. Okay, so first off, getting published, I'm not going to go into that too much because the process isn't too different from your average novel or story getting accepted and published. And there are just, there are a ton of resources out there already that can help you out. I'd say the main difference is something I touched on in the last video, that you want to make sure your work has been performed, at least a workshop performance, because the publisher will not accept your work without making sure it's been tried out on the stage. Most publishers are okay with just a workshop performance, but always check their guidelines on their website. A neat thing is that a lot of publishers like to have photos of your workshop performance, so make sure you've taken plenty of those that you can send in, and then if they publish you, they'll put them on their website. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead to the good part. Your play has been accepted and you've been offered a contract. Woohoo! It's so exciting. Now, you're going to be offered a percentage uh, as your royalties. Not just a percentage of every book sale, but a percentage of every performance. The percentage of the performance is going to be more than the percentage of the book sale which you're going to sell more books than there will be performances. So that's a pretty good deal for the publisher. Um, there's also typically a different percentage for if your uh, play gets accepted to be made into a movie or a TV show. Um, mine's quite a bit. It's around 90%, I want to say. 70 to 90, uh, which is a very high percentage. Um, but it's still a good deal for the publisher because it's incredibly unlikely that that's ever going to happen. And of course, those things make so much money that they'll make money. So yeah, I, I don't think they have a problem with offering a decent percentage for that. On the same note with royalties, it's, it's good if your work gets made into a show because the royalty percentage is higher. Um, but not just because of that, it's because when it's made into a show, every single cast member will need to have their own copy of the play. So aren't you glad you took the time to write a historical ep epic with 50 plus cast members? Now as to marketing, um, that's a bit interesting. I can only go by what my publisher, having only one published play, uh, I can only go by what they've done. And what they've done is they sent me a few little posters they made up. They're about the size of an average piece of paper. Um, I'm not sure if they have bigger ones. I know I can order more posters, so maybe there's a size selection. Um, if I want to, I can order more at a discount. There are also t-shirts, which is quite nice. For free, they put my play in their catalog, which goes out quarterly. I want to say it's quarterly. So my play is automatically in their catalog every single time. Another nice thing they did was when I first signed up with them, they asked me if there were any theaters I knew that might be interested. I could list up to five and send in their contact info. And what they did is they then sent a promo package to those theaters, uh, which was very nice. I haven't heard back from any of those theaters, but still, it was a very nice thing for them to do. The royalty reports come twice a year, uh, January and July. Uh, that's twice, yes. <laughs> that's your typical bi-yearly bi thing. Um, and that is the only notice that I get that my play has been performed because they'll list the theater and the dates of the performance on the report. So typically you're not going to know when a theater does your show, and this is where search engines can be your friend. Um, you don't 
want to overdo it, maybe check every couple of months or so. And it, particularly if your play is seasonal, like mine is a Christmas play. So I do check a couple times, but I check in like September, October, and November, and that's it. That's mainly because theaters have different times when they post things. Some post at the beginning of their season, which is usually in September. Some post um, just when the play is having auditions. So they don't always post at the same time. So that's why I check those three months in a row, just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Now, if you find that a theater is putting on your show, by all means, go if you can. It's a treat and a half to see it done differently than your workshop performance. Uh, if you can't go, drop them a line, email, or a note on their Facebook, just something polite, thanking them for putting on, on your show, and wishing them all the best. If you do get the chance to go, it's up to you if you want to go incognito or not. Uh, this last time, which was at the end of 2017, I was able to go and I had every intention of just going on the down low, not letting anybody know I was there. Um, but once I got there, I kind of wussed out and I dropped a note on their Facebook just saying, hey, you know, uh, best of luck, break legs, I'm going to be in the audience watching you. Even if I hadn't done that, my husband happened to mention to the box office ladies that uh, my wife is here and she wrote it and they told the director who came out to see me and uh, so that was, that was really nice, I will say. It was very nice to meet her. And then she did an announcement over the loudspeaker before the performance started saying, oh, by the way, we have the playwright in the audience, which the playwright was uh, just about ready to dive under her seat at that, except that would have been more noticeable and people would have definitely known where I was. So it didn't, wouldn't have really worked. And then the neat but weird thing about people knowing that you're there is they're just all bowled over to meet the writers. So, I, I, you know, at that performance, I had to stay afterwards to meet everybody, um, which was really cool. And especially with the little kids, they they feel like you're a celebrity or something. So, you know, you're you're signing autographs and taking pictures, and it's it's neat and it's weird and um, and fun and really fun to meet everybody. The only downside to that, of course, is if there's something you don't like, you can't say anything. You, that's just, for one thing, rude. For another thing, it's already in the middle of the performance, so, uh, or the performance run, so they're not going to change it anyway, so why would you say anything? Now let me back up here, because there's a point I definitely want to make. What if your local theater, the, the one or maybe not the one you did the workshop with, has decided to do a regular performance of your play? Should you get involved? Well, that depends on your ability to or not to micromanage. Because I, I've said before, you do not want to get super into these things because once it's into workshops and off the page or well into workshops and off the page or into the theater generally and off the page it's not quite your baby anymore it's other people's babies as as well if you want to get involved you know just ask the theater if they say no accept it graciously and go to see it if you want when it is staged if they do agree then here's what I did. My local theater that did the workshop did put on an actual performance and I was able to get involved. It was directed by a couple of good friends of mine, so that might have been why they were okay with it. But I was allowed to sit in on casting, which I mainly did out of curiosity. And if I had any major issues or thoughts I could speak up, I didn't, but you know, just in case. Um, and then the same thing with rehearsals. I worked out a schedule where I only came about, I want to say I came to every other week uh, to one rehearsal. 
And when I was there, I sat quietly, I watched, I listened, and I made notes. And then at breaks and afterward, I passed along the notes to, quietly <laughs> to the directors. And they were then free to take or not take my ideas as they saw fit. I want to talk a bit about the first performance and what a, a crazy, surreal, awesome experience it was. Um, first of all, it was the first performance uh, ever, first real performance done by my home theater. So, of course, I got to go. It was a Christmas play, so it was done in winter, and it was one of those clear, cold winter nights with, uh, it's not too cold, and there's a little bit of snow, but it's not a crazy amount of snow. It's what you think of when you think of a clear, cold winter night. And my parents came in, and so they were able to see it. My older kids were able to go. It, it was awesome. We went, the theater's on the river, so we went across the river and went to a nice restaurant that was, you know, right on the river. We were by the window overlooking it, and there were these little Christmas lights. I mean, it, it was magical. Dressed up all nice for the occasion. I bought a dress, and I mean, I never buy nice dresses, but I bought a nice dress. And we got there in good time and people were starting to file in and the the thing sold out it was it was a christmas play i will say most of the time your play is not going to sell out I, I just happened to write a christmas play and those do pretty well audience wise especially when you have 20 cast members most of whom are kids and their families have to come so people were just filing in and you know again i didn't speak up much about being the author I just wanted to enjoy it which I did we everybody got there we sat down the lights went down and the play started now I don't remember much about the first particular performance it was a performance I think it went well mostly it was the experience which was the main thing and it was well received the the people the audience laughed uh, mostly in the right parts they went oh mostly in the right parts and uh, they very much seemed to enjoy it. So that was awesome. And we stuck around afterwards to congratulate the cast. And then we went home and we talked a bit about it. And then I went up to bed and put on my jammies and brushed my teeth. And I, I just took a minute to sit on the edge of my bed and go, did that just really happen? This is why it's such a treat to see it, because it's such a surreal experience, absolutely surreal, and th there's nothing else quite like it, I don't think. Of course, there were a bunch of performances. I did get to see most of them, I and mean, being the, the author, I could go for free, so that was nice. It was Christmas uh, time the Christmas season so I think there was one I missed because I had other things going on but I got to see most of them and most of them were very good of course there were a couple there's always at least one performance where it seems like everything goes wrong and I still remember the flood lines the um <laughs> the actors coming up with their own lines, for which I could have just, uh, anyway. <clears throat> and uh, there was a missed entrance that you could have driven a truck through that space. And I will never forget those. <laughs> but I will also never forget the entire overall experience. And it was incredible. So I've said it before, and I will say it again, there's nothing like playwriting and I love it and that's why I, I hope to keep doing it for a good long time we'll see that's it that's pretty much the end of this series I can't think of anything else to cover if you can think of anything I haven't mentioned do bring it up in the comments and I will do my best to answer it 
I certainly hope I've inspired you to write your own plays or to put them out there if you've got them already. Um, give this video a like if you found it helpful. Subscribe if you haven't and click that bell icon. That is incredibly helpful because that will notify you whenever I have a new video. I will see you next week. And until then, write with love and write with power.